It's a rare life-threatening lung disorder that impacts seven out of every one million people in the general population. It occurs when an oily substance normally present in the air sacs builds up and causes a feeling of breathlessness that can worsen over time. We'll learn more about this complex disease from a renowned pulmonologist, but first, let's meet Eric, whose diagnosis came as a complete shock to his former personal trainer. We're going behind the mystery of autoimmune pulmonary alveolar proteinosis, or APAP. After I was in the hospital for five or six days, um, things weren't looking really good. I could barely breathe and nothing was working to clear out my lungs at all. The doctor told me that I had a 3% chance to live and I need to say goodbye to my kids. So that was hard. I've always been really active. Um, from a young age, I started ice hockey as soon as I could walk. After I graduated college, I started working as a personal trainer and fitness was a huge part of my life. My kids were real young and we were moving to our dream house and I moved everything, just myself. And I noticed as I was moving, just walking up one flight of stairs, I was completely winded, which is very uncharacteristic of me. Shortly after moving into that house, uh, we took the kids down to Florida and I blew my knee out the first day and when I got back home, I went to my orthopedist who ordered a uh, chest x-ray before they, he would operate on me. And I got a call on my anniversary evening, ready to go out to dinner. And the radiologist told me that my lung x-rays came back very abnormal and basically said I needed to see a pulmonologist as soon as possible. Pulmonary alveolar proteinosis is a rare syndrome in which an oily substance called surfactant builds up in the air sacs of the lung, also called alveoli, and prevents oxygen from passing into the blood. Normally, surfactant is present in the air sacs as a thin layer that helps them stay open and function and is normally cleared by alveolar macrophages. Autoimmune PAP occurs when the immune system produces a protein called GMCSF autoantibody, which blocks macrophages from functioning and, and prevents them from clearing surfactant from the air sacs. The symptoms of autoimmune PAP are nonspecific and include breathlessness, cough, fatigue, occasionally a white frothy sputum, chest congestion, chest pain, and some patients also have fever and cough up blood, which indicates that infection of the lung is also present. As soon as I got to my appointment, the doctor was going over a sheet from the radiologist and the radiologist said on there, looks like he has PAP. And the pulmonologist looked at his diagnosis and looked at me and said, there's absolutely no way you have PAP. You're way too healthy for that. And then he ordered that bronchoscopy so he can confirm exactly what I had. I went through that procedure, everything seemed to go fine. Until later on that night, my chest started getting really, really heavy. I let it go for a few more hours and I, I generally just could not breathe at all. Um, so we hopped in the car and rushed off to the hospital. And by 2.30 in the morning, my lungs were collapsing and I had double pneumonia. I was on every kind of antibiotic you could imagine and nothing was getting better. Um, the doctor told me I had a 3% chance to live and I should probably say my goodbyes to my family. Some of my friends had gone in and started researching what the radiologist had originally said, PAP, and they found Dr. Trapnell up at Cincinnati Children's. Dr. Trapnell suggested that they do the blood test to confirm or rule out whether or not I in fact have PAP. Once the blood test came back, it showed that I did in fact have autoimmune PAP. The diagnosis of autoimmune PAP is challenging because the symptoms are nonspecific. They occur in other very common lung diseases and physical findings are generally minimal while routine laboratory tests are frequently normal. Most patients are diagnosed initially incorrectly as having pneumonia as adults or, or as having asthma as children. Historically, a lung biopsy has been used to diagnose PAP. However, lung biopsies are unable to diagnose any specific PAP-causing disease, including autoimmune PAP. In marked contrast, 
A simple blood test to measure the level of GMCSF autoantibodies can provide a definitive diagnosis of autoimmune PAP and exclude other lung diseases. Had Eric undergone blood testing for suspected autoimmune PAP, the lung biopsy and subsequent infection and hospitalization would have been avoided. After a few months went by, I had to travel up to Cincinnati Children's to meet Dr. Trapnell for the first time. I think I ran up to the guy and hugged him. I'd never met him in my life, but the, the man truly saved my life. He took as much time as we needed to understand what autoimmune PAP was. Currently, there is no cure for autoimmune PAP. The treatment strategy depends on the severity of the disease, and generally, patients are currently treated with whole lavage, which requires hospitalization, general anesthesia, mechanical ventilation, which is a breathing machine, uh, and requires a team to perform. In whole lung lavage, one lung is connected to a breathing machine, while the other is repeatedly filled with salt water and drained to physically wash surfactant out of the lung. Whole lung lavage can be effective, but it does not stop the disease does not stop surfactant accumulation and is typically required periodically by most patients. After I received the first lung lavage, I was night and day better. You realized how much oxygen you've been missing. It's amazing. I felt like I was 20 years old again. After that, they did a lavage on my second lung and then it was about every eight months or so I'd have to keep going back in. It would cause a lot of anxiety because you know you're going under anesthesia and then the pain you feel in your lungs afterwards, that's not ideal at all for treatment. If my lungs were getting clogged, my energy levels were really low and it was a struggle breathing. After going through a few lung lavages, it became pretty apparent to me that we need more options in terms of managing autoimmune PAP. The goals of treatment in patients with PAP are to reduce symptoms, improve oxygenation, and to improve quality of life, ultimately uh, to address the cause of the disease. My advice for patients uh, living with uh, autoimmune PAP is to learn about the disease. Uh, understanding the disease can help patients make better choices when needed. The patient should talk to their doctor about their symptoms and their ability to perform their normal activities of daily living. It's useful to connect to other patients with similar problems and there are organizations, for example, the PAP Foundation, that can help provide patients with autoimmune PAP with uh, help and information. Now that I know that I have autoimmune PAP, life is similar, just a little bit slower, and I have to constantly manage my oxygen levels in my lungs. I spend time with my kids, try to keep up with them. Over the years that I've known I've had autoimmune PAP, I've been able to connect with other people with the same disease and it was kind of nice to know that I'm not the only one and that there are other people out there. I suggest for anyone with autoimmune PAP that they reach out to their pulmonologist and hopefully you can get someone really good like Dr. Trapnell and get your blood tested and you have your answer right away. Don't wait on it. Don't wait on it at all. If you or someone you know has any of the signs or symptoms of autoimmune PAP, ask your pulmonologist to order a simple, accurate, non-invasive, no-cost blood test at apapclearpath.com. If you have been diagnosed with pulmonary alveolar proteinosis or PAP, visit pathfoundation.org. You could always go to our website, thebalancingact.com. And we'll be back right after this.